Hi and welcome to my part of the internet. If you're new here, my name is Ophelia Adler and I'm a virtual booktuber. Today we're going to discuss a rather small wintry classic called Ethan Frome. It's written by Edith Wharton and I truly like this. I think this is a small gem that I actually do think more people should read and usually I talk about the summary first and it's going to be spoilers so if you do not want to be spoiled I do recommend skipping this and maybe watching it afterwards so I'm going to do a summary of the book with spoilers then I'm going to talk a little bit about all the characters and things that I found very interesting with the characters then I'm going to talk about two symbols that I saw in this book that I really want to talk about. And then of course I'm going to talk about my own experience with the book. So you can of course jump to my experience because that's not going to be a lot of spoilers in that one if you're interested in that. But the rest of this video is going to have spoilers uh, just to have been warned. So to start off we have the summary. We start off with a narrator that we don't really know much of but he comes to this village where Ethan Frome lives and he is in love with how it looks like with the snow and uh, the snow, snowy mountains and we get this beautiful descriptions how it looks like and it's, it's truly beautiful. Um, but then he gets into a snow blizzard uh, after getting to know an Ethan and he's getting help from Ethan being driven back and forth. Uh, and Ethan tells him that he can come home to him and he can stay there over the night uh, when this uh, wintry blizzard is coming in. Uh, and when he comes to Ethan's home he is met with a complaining voice and after we hear about this complaining voice uh, we are uh, going back in time to get to know Ethan's background story and who this complaining voice comes from and why Ethan is how Ethan is and I think it's like 30 years or maybe 20 years back uh, in time that we go and Ethan is not very happy he is forced to take over the family farm that he's not very interested in uh, having he wants to be an engineer and wants to leave this place but he is not having his wish fulfilled first he had to like stay and take care of his mother but then he also marries this wife called Sinobia or Sina as we also call her and Sina she is a little bit of a hypochondriac she thinks she has every sickness there is uh, so he also takes care of her and now when we being described this coldness and this snowy mountains and snowy place it's not much so beautiful as the narrator was describing it but this time it's a little bit more isolated and really cold and it's dark and it's like six months of this coldness and darkness uh, which I will come back to later on my thoughts on that because uh, I do have a relation to that um, and he's living on this farm and he is also not very happy with his wife Sina and he feels like he's not in love with her uh, and this one day his wife says that she needs uh, someone to come and live and help her in the household because she's sick and the doctor told her that she needs to do as little as possible uh, to be good again and so she hires someone to come and be a live-in person uh, and first her cousins come to live with them and Ethan suddenly feels this 
extreme passion for this cousin, and the cousin feels the same.、Uh, one night, when Sina goes to see the doctor, she's away for the entire night and day.、Um, This cousin and Ethan is having dinner together, and they realize that they have these feelings for each other, and they also、uh, break one of Sina's favorite、um, wedding presents, which is this uh, this uh, this big china that she really really truly loves.、Uh, but the cousin is really really drawn to Ethan, and Ethan is really really drawn、uh, to this cousin. Uh, and when the wife comes home, she is heartstruck when she sees that this china is broken, and she wants the cousin to be out because she is also going to have another person to come in and help her with all things that she needs help with instead of the cousin. And this makes Ethan super super sad because he does not want、uh, the cousin Maddie、um, to leave. And、uh, when she has to leave, he offers that he can drive her to the train.、Uh, and when he does,、um, they decide to go sledding together because she asked Ethan to go sledding with him before, but he denied it. And then he said, "We need to do this before you go, you know, because I denied last time, so we need to do it now."、Uh, and on the way down from the sled, there's this big tree.、Uh, And first,、uh, the, the cousin Maddie is a little bit afraid because she tells Ethan that, "Are you really sure that you can like avoid the big tree so we don't hit the big tree?" And he says that he can, and so they go down, and、uh, he does go past the tree, and they're having a lot of fun. But then she says, "Can we go down again? But this time maybe you can hit the tree because life is not life if I can't." Live with you, or something like that. And first, he's horrified that she's even suggesting this, and then he he realizes that it's true.、Uh, life is not happy because he's with this wife who he's miserable with, and he's on this farm which he's miserable at, and he is in this village where it's cold and it's dark, and he doesn't like it here, and. So he realized that the cousin Maddie, she she is right in what she's saying. So they go down a second time and then they hit the big tree together. But they don't get their wishes through because they both survive. And after that, we go back into the future to the narrator and him getting into the home, where we see that Maddie still lives. With、uh, Sina and Ethan, and Maddie is、uh, crippled, and so is Ethan, but Maddie much more so than Ethan. And、uh, Maddie, the cousin, is also very, very cranky now, and she's very unhappy and negative. And Sina takes care of Maddie, basically, and、uh, it's it's a very Very sad ending and a very、uh, odd way that.、Uh, but Sina says that Maddie has nowhere else to go, and they don't have any other family members that can take her in, and they have to take her in and take care of her. And then you hear some rumors about. I wonder what Sina would think. You know, they were out sledding when he was supposed to drive her to the train, and then they hit this big tree. What does it mean? Uh, what does Sina think it means? But we never really get those、uh, questions answered, really. Which、uh, I guess we have to like think for ourselves what we think.、Um, but the most interesting about this book, in my perspective, is the way the characters are described, and we can begin with Ethan from because he's the protagonist of the story. Ethan is a farmer whose family has lived and died on the same farm for generations.、Uh, he's kind of sensitive, I would say.、Um, Ethan has this deep, almost mystical appreciation of nature, I would say, and he feels 
a very strong connection to youth and beauty and vital spirit, which he finds in Maddie, the cousin later on. Uh, but even still, we have this. He's like ultimately lacks in the inner strength necessary to like escape from all the things um like the forces of convention and climate and his wife that he doesn't like like he he has the drive and he has the things that he wants to do and he's unhappy but he still don't have the strength to actually break free and escape from them then you have Sinu, Sinubia, or Sina as we also call her. She's Ethan's wife. Most commonly in the story we get to know her as Sina because that's what she's called in the story. She comes across as prematurely aged. Uh, she has a huge temperament. She's prone to alternating fits of silence and rage, and she's utterly unattractive. She's described like she's this prematured old lady, even though she's not older than Ethan himself. But she's like described with the most negative attributes that you can think of. And. She also has this degree of hypochondriac, so she imagines the illnesses that she has and even like the minor symptoms she gets like freaked out about. Um, and despite seeing as apparent physical weakness, because um, she she is described to be this very very thin person with no 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 boobs and like no female uh like sexy attributes or whatever you want to call it but even if she's like looks and is described as physically weak with her her small tiny arms and everything she's the one who holds the dominant position in the household but she's also the one who holds up like in the end she's the one who holds up the the their household uh taking care of maddie and ethan because they both get hurt uh in the, in the sledding in the end but i do find it very interesting how they are describing cena as this really negative person because when i read it my first thought was that I hated Sina and she was very unlikable and I just didn't like her at all and I just felt that Ethan did the right thing when he chose the cousin and I was like yeah you know you're not gonna be happy with Sina and she's horrible but then I started thinking why I thought like that and when I went back into the text I realized it's because they never describe anything positive or anything good about Sina. Everything they describe about Sina is negative. Or she's ugly, or she's this horrible human being, and she is unlikable. But some part of me just feel like if she's that unlikable and that horrible, why would Ethan have married her in the first place? And I feel like the entire story is just a little bit seen from Ethan's eye. Because then when we get to the next character, which is Maddie Silver, which is seen as cousin. She is described as this attractive, young, energetic person, and she has all these positive attributes and you know she has boobs she has this feminine body with like you know she has this this child giving hips and you know she has everything that Sheena does not have they are complete opposites and that's you know when she was described maddie i just felt like that's when i realized that you know humans are not 100 percent amazing and 100% unlikable. They have to be somewhere in between. And that's when I realized 
probably these two people were described through the lens of Ethan from himself. Uh, and he was so in love with Maddie that this is the way he saw her at that time, as well as, as he was so frustrated with Xena because she kind of represented him being stuck there. Because even if he did not want to be married with her and he did not want to be there with her and everything, she and he was not strong enough to leave her, she was like this representative. She was one of the forces that kind of held him in place. Because, you know, he did not want to take over the farm, but the farm still keeps him on the farm. And maybe he could have sold the farm. But now he's married to Sina, and now he kind of have to take care of Sina as well. So she's another reason to why he's stuck at the farm. But then you have the cousin Maddie Silver, who is this positive, energetic person who does not mind go traveling together and, you know, finding themselves somewhere else and, you know, love and affection with, will rule the world and it will win all the time and we will, you know, it doesn't matter if we are poor and everything like that. Um, which is not a very realistic way of looking at life, but I understand that if you're in love that could be <laughs> maybe your way of thinking. Um, but because the readers see Maddie only through Ethan's own lovesick eyes, Maddie never truly emerges as a well-rounded character for me. She often seemed more a focus for Ethan's rebellion against Cena and the farm itself than actually like a normal flesh and blood person with both strength and weaknesses because I, I didn't feel like we got much off Maddie more than she was this big symbol of being his escape and what he wanted and you know she's everything Cena is not and he was upset with Cena because she was holding him back and therefore he loved Maddie. Um, but I could be wrong in that way of looking at it, maybe. Uh, but speaking of symbols, I saw two kind of symbols. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is the cat and the pickle dish. The pickle dish was the dish uh, or china that was broken um, when Cena went to the doctors. During the, their meal alone, because um, it was only Maddie and Ethan because Cena was away at the doctor's. During the meal alone in the evening, Ethan and Maddie shares the house with a cat, which first breaks Cena's dish because it was the cat who broke it. Um, and then it seats itself as Cena's rocking chair. So the cat breaks the dish and then it goes and sits down in Cena's chair. And I feel like this animal kind of serves as the symbol of Cena, kind of like... Like even if Cena is not there, you know, she still like has her invisible presence in the house because this is Cena's cat and she loved the cat. And the cat is... First she breaks their wedding china uh, which I feel like represents Ethan finally making a move and Maddie and then the wedding China breaks because it represents Cena and Ethan's actual marriage breaking and you know he finally took that step in talking to Maddie about his feelings which means that was like the last step and that kind of like ruined or put a crack into their marriage with Cena, but then also the fact that the cat goes and sits in Cena's uh, chair kind of symbolizes that even though she's not there, like her presence is still there lingering over Maddie and Ethan, so they're still not like alone, alone in the house. Um, but she's still this force that comes between Maddie and Ethan and they can like not be together because it's still like 
reminds them that he's still married and his wife still has an existence somewhere, even if she's not in the house right now. Um, I feel like that's kind of what that meant. Uh, and another thing that I thought was really interesting is uh, most of the things that we have described is uh, you know, this beautiful landscape, which is, you know, snow everywhere, ice everywhere, which is like, you know, it's white and it's pure and it's uh, beautiful. Uh, even though it starts out beautiful, we later on get, you know, the feeling of coldness and darkness and isolation, uh, which I feel as a Swede who, you know, has very dark months in our, uh, in our uh, year and uh, during winter we don't really have that much uh, sun and, uh, you know, snow is the only thing that brights out the place. I can understand feeling isolated, uh, but I feel like, you know, the snow is more like a uh, representing of the isolation that he feels because he does not feel like he, he belongs in the village, he does not feel like he belongs in the marriage, he doesn't feel like he wants to be on the farm, he wants somewhere else, and he visualized himself in another life. And so, you know, the, the further we get into the book, the more the coldness brings in and the colder it gets, because in the beginning they say that it's cold, but like in the end they complain about the cold more often and almost all the time and they complain about the darkness because it's dark all the time and it's cold all the time so it begins with this beautiful landscape description to being this awful coldness and awful darkness and they're like stuck in this horrible place where they can't escape from it and it's being isolated and almost like suffocating for them. And in this, we also have Maddie's, the cousin Maddie's red scarf and red ribbon. There's like two key scenes uh, with Maddie and Ethan when they're alone together. There's one when they're outside a church. Uh, and then you have uh, in Fromm's house in the evening when Sina is not there, what we talked about with the, the cat and the pickle dish, the china that breaks. Uh, and the author, Edith Worthen, she talks so much about what that Maddie is wearing red. Uh, do, when, after when she's at church, uh, she has a red scarf. Um, and for the evening when they're alone, she has a red ribbon in her hair. And, you know, as you know, red is like the color of blood ruddiness, I don't know, good health, I guess, uh, vitality, and you know, it's all these things that Maddie has, but Sina does not have, you know, she doesn't have the good health because she's sick and or hypochondriac and she doesn't have the vitality and so on. But in the oppressive, with the white landscape that we have, the red also stands out a lot. She becomes this big beacon of light almost. Um, so she kind of like stands out from this horrible, oppressive landscape that Ethan's life is. But we also have like the most common thing that red is also the color of sin and it's also color of, you know, the devil uh, and... Uh, and, uh, you know, um, <laughs> and other things. So, you know, she, she, it's also like, you know, she, she can be this devil who's there to uh, romanticize uh, Ethan and make him, you know, leave his marriage and, you know, uh, make him do stuff that <laughs> is against uh, the gentleman, uh, you know, rules. Um, but yeah, uh, let's talk about my experience reading this. I read it in one sitting actually, and I thought it started out rather slow. Like the first when I, I read it with the narrator, I was a little bit mm. 
But then when I, I, I got into it and I started reading it, I, I really truly liked it. My, my favorite part is, like I said before, the way the characters are described ag against each other and I truly love how different uh, Sina and Maddie is. I feel like they represent two different things uh, and I feel like it's very interesting how they are portrayed from Ethan's own lens of eyes or his mind. Uh, what they represent for him and what they are for him. Um, but I, I don't like the character Ethan at all. I feel like he's he doesn't know what he wants and I feel like he's a very weak man. They can't take a decision and he, he doesn't stick with his decisions because, you know, he did marry Sina, but he's also very willing of throwing her under the bus. And then when it comes to it, you know, in the end, when they are going to do like a Romeo and Julia, let's die <laughs> kind of thing, um, they still, you know, it wasn't him who did the decision of the killing either. It was Maddie who came with the suggestion and pushing him to do it and then deciding to do it. So I feel like, you know, all the decisions is not made by Ethan himself. Uh, and considering how weak-minded he is and how dominant Sina is in their relationship, I feel like he has just been run over by a very strong, independent woman and everything could just have been sorted out if he just knew how to talk about it or if he just knew how to communicate his wants and his needs in life it's an interesting book though and i do truly recommend that people read it it's i would say it's a very fast read it's also one of those classics that you don't you can be a beginner in reading classics to understand it. You don't really need to use a lot of your brain cells to gather all the symbolism and all the all the other things because it's very straightforward and it's very easy to read. And I don't know, I truly like it. I do, I do recommend it. And it was a, it was a magical read for me actually. So. Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you for listening to another classical ramble with me, your host, Ophelia Adler. And I hope that to see you all soon. Don't forget to like and comment and follow if you haven't done that yet. And uh, I will see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>